الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الحمد لله السلام عليكم peace be unto you welcome back to the Dean show today we do a series on it's called message to the Muslims so this is an line of ser series out of the love that we have for all our brothers and sisters in the Dean we tried to give some nasiha. Now, all of us together collectively, because we love each other, we try to help each other. And as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, we're uh, a reflection of each other. So today in the studio, we have back with us Imam Ibrahim Salaam and our brother Ahmed. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You finished at El Hazhar yes. University. You memorized the whole Quran. Yes. Man, and all the Hadith of Buhari. So we can go on and on on your credentials to uh, forgiveness, Nasiya, but uh, people can visit you on dermali.net? Dot com. Dot com. Okay, if you want to check out the rest of his uh, uh, biography. So now, in a short amount of time, now we're, we're expecting that somebody now, we, we, we have them for a few minutes, either up late at night and, you know, they're feeling a little guilty that I'm making a salad or whatnot. And after you testify, after you acknowledge who your creator is, that... He is the only one worthy of worship. There is nothing comparable to him. And now you should be doing what every Muslim is ordered to do, is to submit to his will, right? Yep. But the first action and that one will be responsible for is the Salat. The Muslim's not making it. What advice do you have to him? Go ahead and shoot. Allahu Akbar, Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Uh, before I answer your question, I want to tell you something. If someone give you a car yeah and and gas free gas every day and food in every day and beautiful house what do you tell that person thank you very much see i don't think you give allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the right if you don't pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you life allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you health allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you everything and he asks you for five times prayer every day every time just a few minutes. If you calculate like five minutes by five times a prayer every day, 25 minutes. It's no big deal. It's not big deal. Yeah. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the person will be unappreciated, if the person not praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that if, we, if he give you a car, I will be thank you. Allah ask you to thank him for doing the prayer. By the way, my advice for my dear brothers and sisters, the Muslims, brothers and sisters, without the salah, without the prayer, we are not Muslims. The Prophet وسلم, and listen to this hadith carefully. He said in the authentic hadith, The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable in the day of judgment is as-salah, the prayer. If Allah accept the salah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that salah, every single action you do in life is accepted. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reject the salah, every single action in this life will be rejected. Not only that. And that person will be in the day of judgment, in the gathering land, in his fire with whom? With Abu Jahl, with Haman, with the Pharaoh, of, the Pharaoh Ubayy ibn Khalaf, Abu Lahab, with those people. Those people will be the lowest place in Jahannam. May Allah protect us from that. So the salah is Ibad al-Din, the pillar of the deen. That is the salah. So if you want to be appreciated to Allah, Allah asks you to pray five times on time. There is no excuse not to pray on time. So start praying. It's very important. And we say this because out of the love, once again. Right? Absolutely out of the love. Question, you had a question. question. Go ahead. Question. Yeah. Um, dealing with the youth, I see a lot of brothers um, and sisters, they feel it's kind of hard being in high school to fit socially with everyone else. They feel they become more religious. They tend to maybe separate separate from their friends in the social gatherings. What do you say about that? This is really, uh, to me, it's a self-esteem and confidence. First, any school will never, by the law, never prevent them or stop the kids to go and pray if there is a time for prayer. Even here in America, I'm talking about. This is number one. Number two, with the if the person feel this kind of love with Allah subhanahu wa taala and he have to pray, it's not going to take. Two, three minutes. So my advice, and if not only that, is an, only another advice, 
if that person praying in front of everyone with no shyness, don't feel shy when you pray in front of the people and the kids, that people would respect you more and more. Maybe it will bother you in the beginning. Maybe they will bother you. But after that, Ahmed, they will love you very much. They will respect you very much. In fact, they will trust you because you are connected to Allah. And they will look at you as a model, as an example. And they will look at you. This, if they want any problem, they will come to you. If they need any trust, any secret, they will come to you. Why? Because you have this connection with Allah. But at the same time, don't declare war against the others if they are not praying. You can give da'wah to them. Invite them. Advise them. Because we are... Advice to each other. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ad-Deen al-Nasiha. The Deen, our religion, and advice to each other. So my advice to them, pray, speak to the principal, or speak to the teacher for a few minutes, in for Salat al -Dohr. only Salat al -Dohr. that's when that's cool, and take your side, and pray, and be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'd like to compare that to, now, you have some kids, and I make this, I, I love making analogies, because people can start to, to relate. You know, a kid or even some adults, they talk to some, and they make up in their lonely and an invisible friend. And they talk to this, you know, a kid sometimes, mm -hmm. say, oh, this is Mike, you can't see the kid, the parents like, stop this, you know what I mean? So where am I going with this now? And then they start to go from here and develop a relationship. Now this friend, this person that you're making up can, can do nothing for you, right? You can't see him. But now, it somewhat helps a person, right? Now where am I leading to? If you're connected now with the one that you can't see, but he can see you, you're connected with him, you can't see him, but you've established a connection five times a day, what we do, okay, through the prayer, through your creator, this of course is going to help you psychologically, yep. physically, you can talk to your creator about anything. He's the only one, you don't have to in Islam, like confess your sins, you don't have to, you know, whatever you've done, you can let it all out. Like someone will lock in a room and just talk to themselves. Maybe that invisible person and let it on. They feel like, you know, a uh, uh, hundred kilos has come off them. In the prayer, people can do this, right? Absolutely. They can prostrate to the ground and, 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 just, speak. and just speak your mind. Yep. People even actually pay like two, three hundred dollars to go to a psychiatrist <laughs> just to talk. <laughs> With Allah. So people are talking to invisible people, right? They can't do nothing for them. They're paying three, four hundred dollars an hour, right? to talk to a shrink, a psychologist, he's putting his feet up on the cha table <laughs> and listening to you. But these people really can't benefit you, right? But you just feel better because you're able to release, right? Yep. So we in Islam have this beautiful connection with the creator of the heavens and the earth, and you can just talk. And he's not going to charge you, right? Actually, it will reward you. Actually, it rewards you. I like what you said, uh, Eddie. It is really beautiful. In a way, uh, you go psychiatrist to pay money, you know what? Our religion, our deed is so beautiful. Before you go and make salah, you make wudu. Yeah. This water, when the water touching the hands and touching the face and touching the head and touching the feet, that water itself is different feeling. And then when you feel yourself so fresh, then you go and stand between the hands of Allah, facing Allah, say Allahu Akbar, just to say Allahu Akbar, leaving this materialistic life behind you, all the dunya behind you, and they're facing to Allah, speaking to Allah, especially with Surah Al-Fatiha. I wish you understand Surah Al-Fatiha, brothers and sisters. We say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. You, the alhamd different than the shukr Alhamd. Be continuous thanking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this body, for this health. So, and that is really the most beautiful thing we can even imagine is the prayer between the hand of Allah. In just one sentence, because, uh, one sentence because we got... Uh, we're pressed on time. Just one last piece of advice you can give our brothers out there. The Salah is a link between you and Allah. The Salah is the tool of communication between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you feel depressed, if you feel angry, if you feel sad, if you need anything, go and pray two rakah to Allah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you what you want. And I guarantee Allah will listen. And I guarantee that benefits for you, Allah will give it to you, inshaAllah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you again, brothers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you again you. for Thank being you. on the Dean Show. Real simple. Get plugged in. Hook up with your creator. Nothing created. The creator of the heavens and earth. A direct dialogue. Nobody in the middle. This is between you and your creator. Connect with him. In the salah. In the prayer. It's a beautiful thing. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.